Ok, Assalamualaikum and hi My name is Muhammad Afiq Iman bin Muhammad Pauzi And I am a UTEM student Which is from the Faculty of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering and Technology I am from class BMMF Year 3 And my matrix number is B092010041 and today I'm going to present about the United Nations Regulation number 9 which is the noise of three wheel vehicles okay now we jump to the introduction so the United Nations Regulation number 9 is a regulation on noise of three wheel vehicles three wheel vehicles are categorized as vehicle category L2, L4 and L5 as you can see in the image below the purpose of this regulation is about the concerns of approval of category L2, L4 and L5 vehicles with regard to sound emission. In addition, there are tests with their methods done to some vehicles. There will also be modifications towards some vehicles, so every modification of the vehicle type or of the exhaust or silencing system shall be notified to the type approval authority which approved the vehicle type. Okay, so now we jump to the terminology of this regulation. So the terminology is the terms that is used in this regulation. So for the first one, approval of vehicle. It means the approval of a vehicle type with regard to the noise level and the original exhaust system as a technical unit. Number two, vehicle type means a category of motor vehicles which do not differ in such essential risk respects. Number three, exhaust or silencing systems. It means a complete set of components necessary for limiting the noise made by a motor vehicle and its exhaust. Number four, exhaust or silencing system of different types. It means exhaust or silencing system which differ in such essential respects. Number five, exhaust or silencing systems component means one of the individual constituent parts whose assembly constitutes the exhaust or silencing system. And number six, the curb mass means the mass of the vehicles ready for normal operation and fitted with equipment such as full electrical equipment and others. Okay, so next we jump to the test procedure. So this is the test procedure. Uh, as you can see in the figure one, this is the image for the test area. And also its data is given beside it from 3.2, 3.2.1 So this is the test procedure for the measurement of the residual voice content For the purpose of the measurement, course has to be taken from the track in at least 4 different positions which are equally distributed in the test area between slice AA and BB as shown in the previous slide Two cores, which is the minimum, should be taken close to the wheel tracks and one core, which is the minimum, also should be taken approximately midway between the wheel tracks and each microphone location. The residual voice content has to be determined for each core. Then the average value from all cores shall be calculated and compared with the requirement of residual voice content test site. Okay, for the second test procedure, which is the sound absorption coefficient, the sound absorption coefficient, which is the normal incidence, shall be measured by the impedance tube method using the procedure specified in ISO DIS 10.534, which is the acoustics determination of sound absorption coefficient and impedance by a tube method. The sound absorption shall be measured in the range between 400 Hz and 800 Hz and in the range between 800 Hz and 1600 Hz <coughs> at least at the central frequencies of third octave bands and the maximum values shall be identified for both of these frequency range ok now for the third test procedure which is the volumetric macro texture measurement for the purpose of this standard texture depth Measurements shall be made on at least 10 positions, evenly spaced along the wheel tracks of the test strip and the average value taken to compare with the specified minimum texture depth. So next we jump to the what to measure. The first, the first one is the measuring instruments. 
for the general, uh, the apparatus used for the measuring the sound pressure shall level shall be a sound level meter or equivalent measuring system meeting the requirement of class 1 instruments, which is the inclusive or the recommended windscreen if used. The, uh, so the next one is calibration. At the beginning and at the end of the every measurement session, the entire acoustic measurement measuring system shall be checked by means of a sound calibrator that fulfills the requirement of class 1 sound calibration according to the IEC 60942-2003. The third one, the compliance with requirements. Compliance of the sound calibrator with the requirements of IEC 60942-2003 shall be verified once a year with the instrumentation system with the requirements of IEC 61672-1-2002 shall be verified at least every two years. Instrumentation for speed measurements. The rotational speed of the engine shall be measured with an instrument meeting specification limit of at least plus minus 2% or better, while the road speed of the vehicle shall be measured with instrument meeting specifications limit of at least plus minus 0.5 km per hour when using continuous measuring devices. Next one is the meteorological instrumentation. The meteorological instrumentation used to monitor the environmental conditions using the test shall meet the following specifications. Plus minus 1 degree Celsius or less for a temperature measuring device. Plus minus 1 MS for a wind speed measuring device. Plus minus 5 HPA for a barometric pressure measuring device and plus minus 5% for a relative humidity measuring device. Okay, for number 2, the condition of measurement. Condition of the vehicle. General condition, the, ve the vehicle shall be supplied as specified by the vehicle manufacturer. Before the measurement are started, the vehicle shall be brought to its normal operating conditions. The test shall not be carried out if the wind speed including gas exceeds 5 milli per second during the sound measurement interval. Okay, second one, the tire selection and condition. The tires shall be appropriate for the vehicle and shall be inflated to the pressure recommended by the vehicle manufacturer for the test mass of the vehicle. The tires shall be selected by the vehicle manufacturer and correspond to one of the tire size and types designated for the vehicle by the vehicle manufacturer. The minimum tread depth shall be at least 80% of the full tread depth. The third one is the miscellaneous. Measurements shall not be made in pure poor weather conditions. For measurement purposes, the weight sound level A of sound source other than on the test vehicle and the sound level produced by the effect of the wind shall be at least 10 decibels A below the noise level produced by the vehicle. If the difference between ambient and the measured noise levels in between 10 and 15 decibels A, in order to calculate the test result, the appropriate correction shall be subtracted from the readings on the sound level meter as given in the table in the next slide. As you can see, this is the table. This is the table 1 corresponding applied to the individual measured test value. The background sound pressure level difference to measure sound pressure level in decibels, which is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, until 15 and above. The correction in decibels A, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 and 0, 0.0. So next we jump to the method of method to measure. So for the measurements of noise vehicles in motion, positions for a test, the maximum weighted sound level A expressed in decibels shall be measured as the vehicle is driven between lines A, A and B, B. The measurement shall be invalid if an abnormal discrepancy between the peak value and the general sound level is recorded. At least two measurements shall be made on each slide side of the vehicles. The distance of the microphone positions from the line CC on the microphone line PP perpendicular to the reference line CC of the test track shall be 7.5 plus minus 0.05 meter. The microphone shall be located 1.2 plus minus 0.02 meter above the ground level. The reference direction for the for free field conditions CIEC 61672-1-2002 shall be horizontal and directed perpendicularly towards the path of the vehicle's line CC. So for the vehicle with no gearbox, the vehicle shall be approached line AA at a steady speed corresponding either in terms of engine speed minimum 1, 
to 3 quarters of the rated engine speed or to 3 quarters of the maximum engine speed permitted by the governor or to 50 km per hour whichever is lowest. Vehicle with a manually operated gearbox. If the vehicle is fitted with a 2 speed or a 3 speed or a 4 speed gearbox, the second gear shall be used. If the vehicle has more than 4 speeds, the third gear shall be used. For vehicle with automatic transmission, the vehicle shall approach the line AA at a steady speed of 50 km per hour or at 3 quarters of its maximum speed, which is the lower. Where several forward drive positions are available, the position shall be selected with results in the highest mean acceleration of the vehicle between line AA and BB. So for the condition of four measurements, test side, <coughs> any area are not subject to measure acoustic perturbations may be used as a test site. Level areas covered with concrete, asphalt or some other hard materials are and are hardly reflective are suitable. Surfaces consisting of earth which has been tempted Tempered down shall not be used. The test site shall have at least the dimensions of a rectangle or the, the sides of which shall be 3 meters above 3 meters from the outline of the vehicle, excluding and the boss. The vehicle shall be placed within the above mentioned rectangle in such a way that the measuring microphone is at least 1 meter from any stone edging. So, the positioning of the microphone. The microphone shall be located at a distance of 0.5 plus minus 0.01 meter from the reference point of the exhaust pipe and at, at an angle of 45 plus minus 5 degrees to the vertical plane containing the flow exit of pipe termination. The microphone shall be at the height of the reference point but not less than 0.2 meters from the ground surface. The reference exit of the microphone shall lie in a plane parallel to the ground surface and shall be directed towards the reference point on the exhaust outlet. So for the method of measurement, the reference point shall be highest point satisfying the following conditions. The reference point shall be at the end of exhaust pipe. The reference point shall be on the vertical plane containing the exhaust outlet center and the flow of exit flow exits of the exhaust pipe termination. For vehicles having an exhaust provided with outlet space more than 0.3 meters apart, one measurement is made for each outlet as if it were the only one and the highest sound pressure level shall be noted. So now we jump to the requirement of this regulation. The first one is the specification for the test site, which is the required characteristic of the surface. The surface is considered to confirm to the standard provided that the texture and voids content or sound absorption coefficient have been measured and found to fulfill all the requirements of the next slide and provided that, and that the design requirements have been met. The required characteristic of the surface, the residual voids content. The residual voids content BC of the test track paving mixture shall not exceed 8% for the measurement procedure C, C which is to see previous slides. The sound absorption coefficient. If the surface fails to conform to the residual voids content requirement, the surface is acceptable only if its sound absorption coefficient. The requirements of statement above and the and this statement are met. Also, if only sound absorption has been measured and found to be a a below 0.10. The texture depth. The texture depth TD measured according to the volumetric method shall be. TD below 0.4 mm, the homogeneity of the surface. Every practical effort shall be made to ensure that the surface is made to be as homogeneous as possible with the test area. This includes the test texture and voids content, but it should also be observed that if the rolling process results in more effective rolling at some places than at others, the texture may be different and unevenness causing bumps may also occur. The period of testing. In order to check whether the surface continues to conform to the texture and voice content or sound absorption requirements stipulated in the standard, periodic testing of the surface shall be done at the following intervals. A. For residual void content or sound absorption, when the surface is new, if the surface meets the requirement when new, no further periodic testing is required. B. For texture depth, TD, when the surface is new, when the noise testing starts, note, to be noted, not before 4 weeks after laying, then every 12 months. Okay, so for the area, 
When designing the test track layout, it is important to ensure that as a minimum requirement, the uh, area traversed by the vehicles running through the test strip is covered with the specified test material with suitable margins for safe and practical driving. This is required the width of the track to be at least 3 meters and the length of the track to extend beyond lines AA and BB by at least 10 meters and at either end. As shown before this, this is the specification of the test site, which is the test surface. This is the graph grading curve for, for, of the aggregate in the asphaltic mix with tolerances. As you can see, in addition to the above, the following recommendations are given. The sand fraction 0.63 mm below square mesh sieve size below 2 mm shall include no more than 55% natural sand and at least 45% crushed sand. The base and sub base shall ensure a good stability and evenness according to the best road construction practice. The chipping shall be crushed in order per sand crush faces and of a material with a high resistance or crushing. <coughs> the chippings used in the mix shall be washed. No extra chipping shall be added to the surface. The binder hardness application SP and value shall be 40 to 60, 60 to 80 or even 80 to 100 depending on the climatic condition of the country. The rule is that as hard as a binder as possible shall be used provided this is consistent with common practice. The temperature of the mix before rolling shall be chosen so as to achieve by subsequent rolling that the required voice content in order to increase the probability of satisfying the specification of paragraph 2.1 to 2.4 above. The compactness shall be studied not only by an appropriate choice of mixing temperature but only by an appropriate number of passing and by the choice of compacting vehicle. As you can see, this is the design guidelines for the test site. So for the stability in time and maintenance, age influence in common with any other surfaces, it is expected that the tire or road noise level measured on the test surface may increase slightly during the first 6 to 12 months after construction. The stability over time is determined mainly by the polishing and compaction by vehicles driving on the surface. It shall be period periodically checked. For the maintenance of the surface, loose debris or dust which could significantly reduce the effective texture depth shall be removed from the surface. In countries with winter climates, salt is, some, salt is sometimes used for the icing. Salt may alter the surface temporarily or even permanently in such way as to increase noise and is therefore not recommended. And finally, the repairing the test area. If it is necessary to repave the test track, it is usually unnecessary to repave more than the test strip of 3 meter width. Where vehicles are driving, provided the test area outside the strip met the requirement of residual voids content or some absorption where it was measured. So we have finally reached the end of this slide. So and that's all from me. Thank you.